Good evening. Good evening, Good evening members, and uh, welcome for this uh, our virtual engagement today. Um, we are very delighted that you could uh, join in. Um, we have a very powerful topic today. Um, and uh, we have the speaker already um, on board. I um, would like to start our session today um, with a word of prayer. I will request um, Elder Kishina to open for us the session. Welcome, Elder. Uh, thank you, Judith. Uh, good evening, members. Uh, uh, let us pray. Jehovah, our God and our Lord, we come before your throne of mercy at this time of the evening, Jehovah God, thanking you and glorifying you, Father, for who, who you are. We thank you, Jehovah God, for the far that you have brought us, Jehovah God. We thank you for the good day, the week that you have given unto us, Jehovah God. We thank you also for the chance that you have given unto us, Almighty God, so that, Father, we can have this session to learn about uh, this issue, Almighty God, of suicide, Jehovah God. Father, we pray that uh, you use our speaker, Jehovah God. Father, use her so that the information, Father, that she is going to pass on to us, Almighty God, we are going to learn, Almighty God. And Father, at, at the end of it all, Almighty God, it's going to be for your glory and honor, Jehovah God. Capture our thoughts, Jehovah God. Capture our mind, Jehovah God. We thank you and we glorify you, Jehovah God. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus Christ we do pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Um, thank you, Elder. Um, I want to take this opportunity to welcome all of us to this very important topic. Um, September is the um, Suicide Prevention Awareness Month. I'm sure you have had this uh, conversation in uh, different uh, forums, even on, on the media. Um, suicide is a national health problem and has actually been ranked second leading cause of death for ages 10 to 44 years. Um, good thing is it is preventable and it is one of the, mo it is uh, the most preventable type of death in the world. So we want to engage in this conversation and our speaker today is Mary Wamboi Mbuthia. Mary is a, a clinical psychologist. Um, she's a member of the health team in the church and uh, I want to ask that we, as we listen to Mary, um, many of us can identify with this topic. I can imagine that if um, we ask that uh, we put up our hands or just indicate if we know um, somebody or a relative or a family member who may have been in this kind of um, um, uh, situation, Many of us can attest to this. So I want to welcome all of us. Let us uh, listen to our speaker. Write down your questions and any um, feedback or comments you would want on the chat box. And uh, as the speaker goes along, she's going to engage us and give us time to ask um, any questions. Um, so welcome, Mary. Um, we are looking forward to this conversation. Thank you so much, uh, Chair. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I hope you can all see me. Uh, my name is Mary, as you've heard. I'm so happy to be here with all of you to look at this very important topic, something that's affecting us directly and indirectly. And I'll just start by sharing my screen. I hope you will all be able to see. Please tell me if you don't. Is it visible? Yes, thank you. 
Okay. All right. Uh, so uh, this topic we'll be looking at today is understanding suicide. As you heard, I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm a member of the church, the member of the health team, as well as um, Northview District is my district. And uh, I'll be taking you through understanding suicide. These are the different uh, areas we look at, the insights, the myths about suicide, awareness, and dealing with someone who's contemplating suicide, what do you need to do or what can you do and the kind of support you can get. So before we begin, and even as Judy was saying, I know among us, we are affected directly or indirectly by, by suicide attempts or death by suicide. Just know that this is a safe space. Um, what we are discussing may spark a bit of emotions. It may bring about, you know, cause it's a different kind of grief. It's a grief that's hard to explain. And uh, I want you to know that you are not alone. Please feel free to reach to any one of uh, the psychologists, the counselors in the church, and you can also reach out to me. So now we are walking this journey together. I want us to look at the statistics of suicide in Kenya. Um, this shows that on average, uh, in a year, we have 317 Kenyans who, um, okay, so this is a screenshot. Nowadays, we don't talk about commit suicide. We say death by suicide or died by suicide. So 317 Kenyans per year uh, die by suicide. And are you seeing the figures on, uh, on, on your right hand side? I don't know if it's right or left according to your machine, but you can see for men out of the 317, men is 240 and 77 is women. And that is a bit alarming, but why it's higher in men than, than the women is because men tend not to seek help. And that's what we are trying to unpack uh, in this day and age. Men um, will go through something. They'll go through a tough situation. I know of people who've come through the therapy room. They've lost their jobs, but the wives don't know. The family doesn't know. They will deal with that themselves. The friends don't know. Or something drastic happens and they cannot fathom how will I go um, to the next steps? They don't see a future after that. So, um, and this is the way out that they choose. So I think it's something we need to look at as Christians and as a community. Uh, this is a reality. What can we do to, to step in and help our men, our men in the society? How can we help them even feel free to speak more? Because it, is it coming from from a place where um, traditionally you're told, Mwaname ni kujikaza, you know, jikaze, yo ni maisha, yo ni life, to it is okay to say what is troubling you. So this is a shocking statistic, and I hope it resonates with us as Christians to step in, man to man, woman to man, woman to woman, um, so that we can at least... Um, prevent the suicides. This is another statistic. I was looking for a pictorial statistic. This is what I could get. But if you look at my casa here, it's what we were talking about. 75% of all suicides are, are men while 25 are women. Uh, and if you look at the, at the graph, look at the graph, the graph is going at an upward trajectory. So I am sure by now it is even higher. So we, this, this, this is a sad reality of what is currently happening. But what was also very interesting down here, I hope you can see that, that most suicide occurs in years where elections were held. I thought this was an interesting uh, perspective to explore, that suicide, suicide and elections are correlated. So when we are going for elections, I think that's when we, we as a Christian community really need to 
just let people know it is okay. We need to talk about uh, coping with that particular season at that time. I hope we are still together and it's not a monologue. Please feel free to chat in if you have a comment, if you have uh, any feedback or a question, please feel free to type in. And uh, this graph now talks about the genders where it talks about the male being higher than female. And it seems it's year, year in, year out, year in, year out. And this is a place we should really explore as, as a, a country, as a community and as the church. Uh, another pictorial view. Uh, this particular slide talks generally about mental health in different aspects. But where I really wanted us to, to, to just dive in a bit is this area where you can see my casa, that four in five people who commit suicide are depressed at the time of their death. So there is a correlation between depression and suicide from these statistics. However, we will uh, in later slides just discuss that, that do you have to be depressed? Does depression equal suicide? So it's a no, but there's a, there's a correlation there. Then um, the other really worrying part is to uh, the second position of suicide in uh, in the lead is the leading cause of death among this age group. And now the age group has expanded. So this is also something very, very worrying. And I'm sure we've witnessed it or we've heard of it. We've seen it on TV or even in our communities or even right at home. And why? The question is why here? What is happening? So let's create that awareness of, uh, of the reason why it's the second leading cause of death among youth. So I'm calling this population, the youth population, our special population. And as psychologists, we are now using a term called for shortened future. And that's where our current generation is. They, they have a for shortened future that they don't tend to have hope in the future. They don't have a motivation for the future. In fact, they ask, what does it matter? Then you mix that apathy with, with uh, social media, with digital content. And all that happens in social media, digitally, the feeling that you'll have is that there's no hope for our future. So what happens is they, they take their phones, their phones is everything. And they feel they are connected to the world through their phones. But really, the more you're connected digitally, the higher your loneliness index. So I may, th I may think I have many friends. I may think I may know many people. And that's what's happening with that generation. How Christ or God, the, the plans he had for us to interact was not purely phones. I am not uh, saying that social media or uh, digital is anything, but it's become a way of life. But, uh, but it is pulling us away from the face-to-face -face interactions. So let me give an example. It's something actually we were discussing with my husband that this generation, for you and me, when we look at our phones uh, and my phone breaks, and, and it gets distorted and I lose data, it can't go on or it falls in water and the rice method is not working. It's okay. We will feel it's okay, I'll buy another phone because one, I have the power the, to buy another phone financially and two, I can even survive with a kabambe and it won't hurt me, I'm okay with it. But remember, this particular generation, if they pick that phone, it falls in water or it, and the rice method doesn't work or it breaks, skin, screen breaks. This is someone who won't go to work. They will stay in bed, feel lost, feel anxiety. Why? Because they're like, 
I am missing out on my friends. I can't connect with my friends. I can't order for the Uber that I want. Their lives is that phone. They feel it doesn't matter. And they don't have the purchasing power. And they cannot, cannot be found with a kabambe. How? Now? What does, you know what my friends will talk about me. So it will distort their image. They can't imagine that. They can't imagine losing their data. And maybe they didn't back up for two weeks. They can't fathom not having their photos that they took yesterday or the day before that they were going to show their friends. And because they do not have the face-to-face -face interactions, you can imagine that loneliness index and the impact of that. It, it is the reality, church. And we we need to, to, to not make one size fit all or one box uh, of solutions fits everyone. Each generation is coming with their own set of, of issues. And we also need to look at it, even as a church, when we approach it, even as psychologists, as we approach it, even as parents and as relatives, we need to understand them. Because when they tell you, "My, I feel like I can't survive without that phone, they actually really mean that. It is not a cry for attention. So that's our special population. So there's, there are various myths about suicide. Um, and before I became a psychologist, I was also a believer of some of the myths um, that come up. In fact, my, my highest myth, or the one that I believed most, was that when someone says they are going to uh, die by suicide, or they want to, go, to die by suicide, that they are actually seeking attention. And you just should leave them alone. So let's see which myths we have. Um, the first myth, you can't ask, ask someone if they are suicidal. But that's really a myth. The fact is, when you do ask, you're opening a door of hope. You could be protecting them. You're giving them a chance to express um, what they are really feeling and that they are not a burden. And then the second myth is people who talk about suicide aren't serious and won't go through it. Uh, that's a myth because the fact is uh, from statistics, people who have died by suicide have actually spoken about wanting to die by suicide or they don't see a, a, a future. They have no hope in the future. So, um, Yes, some may want to get attention, some, but it's not something to ignore. It's important to take that person very seriously when they're talking about suicide and get them the support that they require or the help they require. So another fact is you have to be mentally ill to think about suicide, and that is not the case. Statistics also show that one in five people have thought about suicide at some point in their life. Did it mean they were they were mentally ill? No. But um, so all, not all people who die by suicide have mental health problems at the time that they are dying. Uh, so that's a myth. So um, the next myth is people who are suicidal want to die. But uh, that's not the case because they just really want what they are feeling to go away or what is happening to stop. So they, they may not really want to, but they are not seeing any way out with the current feeling that they are in or the current circumstances they are in. Um, talking about suicide is a bad idea as it may give someone the idea to try it. And, uh, and even as the way the first sentence is saying, there's a time talking about suicide was a taboo. And here we are online engaging and trying to see what can we do about suicide and how can we prevent suicide. So um, people who are suicidal, they don't worry or burden anyone else with how they are feeling. So it is good to talk about suicide. 
It will not give them the idea, but maybe it's in the way that we approach how we we ask the question, you know, what are you struggling with? Tell me about your struggles. Do you think about this? You know, not do you want to kill yourself? No, but it's how we approach and, and talk to that person. And the approach will give them the chance to share authentically what they're really feeling. And even that discussion may give them, you know, they may see other options that they weren't seeing because they were in a point of despair. The other myth is people who say they are going to take their own life are just <laughs> attention and shouldn't be taken seriously. And this is what I was talking about. Um, talking openly about suicide to a loved one, uh, you can be that Samaritan who's going to help that person. They are not attention seeking um, and they should be taken seriously. And that um, when they talk about it, it means they're having trust in you to want to share what is happening. So give them the chance and we may find a way through their thoughts and a way out and a different option. So this is what I want to emphasize. The majority of people who feel suicidal do not actually want to die. They just want the situation they are in or the way they are feeling to stop. And at that point, they don't see any other way out. They don't see beyond the situation and they don't see any other options. Uh, let, this is from the book of Ephesians 1 9. I think it's a King James version. But the things that have, en, have been, it, ha, it is that which shall be. And that which is done is that which shall be done. And there's no new thing under the sun. Nothing new happens under the sun. And the reason for introducing this verse is. Uh, is for us to talk, it's for us to discuss. Please feel free to chat, uh, feel free to just talk openly. Whom in the Bible do you know died by suicide? The floor is open, please let me not be talking alone. Just names, you don't have to explain. Mm -hmm. I can see this Judas, yes. Okay. Uh -huh. There are more people in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Judas is popular. Any other people that you may be aware who died by suicide? Yes, Saul died by suicide. Any other person that you may be aware who died by suicide in the Bible? Mm -hmm. Correct, Solomon, Ahithophel. Abimelech. Yes. Thank you, that's a very good feedback. I can um, just go back to my slide. Uh, hope it's still visible. So, it is. Okay, thank you. So those who died by suicide in the Bible, the soul, the souls, Ambera, Samson, Zimri, Judas, Ahithophel, and and um, I'd like us to do just something very small, just to engage us further. 
um, I will divide, or rather the person behind the scenes will divide us into three groups very quickly, five minutes. You'll talk about how um, you've been in these three groups. Group one will talk about Saul and Saul's arms bearer. Group two will talk about Samson and Zimri, and group three will talk about Judas and Athipo, Athipo Hell. And uh, you'll see how they died by suicide or why they died by suicide. Then we'll come back. So you'll be broken in groups. Don't worry. You'll see something popping, popping up on your screen. Just accept it. Then we'll come back together in five, seven minutes and discuss it further. Okay, okay, then let's proceed because we are short of time. Yeah. Excellent. All oh, right. So group one, uh, maybe just less than a minute, tell us what happened and what you learned from uh, from Saul and Saul Amma's bearer. Yeah, you, you see when uh, the, the, the Saul, Saul committed the suicide, mm. there is one of his lieutenant who finished the job. Mm -hmm. and, he was, and he was later punished mm -hmm. by David. Mm -hmm. So the same thing, I sh the insight we should feel, if somebody has told you and you get you have an idea, mm -hmm. you, should, you should try to discuss it out, mm -hmm. Yeah, sharing it. Okay. Otherwise, if he committed, if he committed suicide, mm -hmm. you have to wait. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Joseph. Group two, you are looking at uh, Samson and Zimri. Judith was taking some notes. Maybe you can share. Okay, thank you. Yes, we're looking at uh, Samson and Zimri. And we saw that uh, Samson um, had, um, um, his, had, had had his eyes gorged out. He had given his secret to his, to, to the, to his strength to Delilah, and uh, at this point, he had asked God to give him strength, and he held um, the, the, the columns of the church, and everybody who was in and himself died. There was a bit of, um, did he commit suicide, or is it him accomplishing his mission? Um, some of us felt he committed suicide. Um, some of us felt maybe it was him accomplishing his mission, but in the process, he, he died. Then um, Zimri, um, in uh, um, First Kings uh, 16, um, he was a chariot commander, and uh, he, he entered uh, the temple, and uh, he set the temple and himself on fire, and he died in that fire. That's how he committed suicide. Okay, and the lessons learned? The lessons learned is uh, the um, hopelessness um, of um, Samson and the situation he was in. And uh, Zimri, um, he died in the fire. And uh, I don't know what I can say about the lesson learned there, Tabitha. Yeah, I have someone who will contribute. Yeah, Zimli, uh, from what we have read, uh, he ruled just on in the northern kingdom for about uh, seven days. And uh, this guy was uh, wicked in the eyes of the Lord. And uh, what he had done, he had killed his predecessors, and he knew actually he's going to be uh, killed. So that's why he had to kill himself before he was uh, overthrown by the next uh, king was coming after him. Thank you. That is very elaborate. Uh, group three, your contributions. We, we looked at Ahithophel. Mm -hmm. His story is in Second Samuel chapter 17 from verse uh, 20 thereabout. 
he was an advisor to Absalom. Mm -hmm. And when uh, when his advice was not heeded to at one point in life, mm -hmm. I think we, we, we thought that he felt bad about it. Mm -hmm. And he decided to, to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. And he was very methodical. The Bible records that he put his house in order. Mm -hmm. And uh, putting your house in order, I'm there putting his house in order. He is very methodical. He's writing, like writing a will, calling his people and telling them, bra, 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 mm -hmm. I'm going for a journey, I will not come back. Mm -hmm. That kind of uh, writing his, his house. Then he went and hanged himself. Mm -hmm. So we, we, we felt that uh, this, this guy had, must have felt very bad about his advice not being heeded. Mm -hmm. He very felt strongly about it. So that the reasoning, his reasoning maybe is that was that uh, if if people cannot listen to him, then uh, he is as good as uh, useless. Mm. So that feeling of uselessness could okay. have been what he felt is good enough for him to depart from this world and go elsewhere. Okay. I think that's what we discussed. Anybody else want to add? Elder Minor? Jack is adding a lot of salt, but uh, he communicates what we discussed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you all so much. Uh, I know it was a short period of time. I would have done more. Maybe we need another session to just really go and dive deep into all these uh, situations. But from the lessons, um, that we learn from the Bible. And as Ecclesiastic says, nothing new happens under the sun. Some of the things that we are talking about are actually in the Bible. Um, that the fact that the suicides were by men. I don't know if you've observed that, that you will not hear of, you'll hear more of men <laughs> um, dying by suicide. Then the other lessons, let me put up my slides. Sorry, I forgot I have slides to put up. So what are the lessons? The lessons are the suicides did not occur as a result of mental health. That um, one was not depressed to, to go ahead and, co and go and die by suicide. I was avoiding committing suicide. Um, for example, Saul's Ambera, he just could not imagine who else can I serve besides Saul. The only way to do is follow what he has done, and he fell on his sword. And the Bible also talks about how David was distressed. To some extent, we thought he was depressed in the book of Psalms, but he did not necessarily uh, choose suicide. Much as he would talk about, he would have some suicidal thoughts or talk about his distress. Um, so um so most of the suicides were related to significant grief or a sudden crisis so i think that's what we really need to be aware even now that depression does not equal suicide but a sudden uh, crisis a sudden change of circumstance can lead one to just go ahead and say this is the only way out that i am seeing um, the suicide affected the strong, Samson. Um, it, it, it does not, it doesn't matter where you're coming from. It, it can affect you. Those thoughts can affect you. Whether you're rich, whether you're wise, whether you're poor, all those can affect you. Um, the prevalence was in men and it wasn't talked about a lot. So the risk factors of suicide, um, these are the indicators. What can be some of the indicators for someone who may choose death by suicide? Um, a person who's attempted suicide before or in the past, uh, someone who has a mental, mental health condition um, like depression, schizophrenia or anxiety disorders. There are some pains, illnesses. It's so painful that the, you, you don't see an end to that pain. There are people who've talked about being in so much pain that they wanted it to stop. And the only way to stop was, was through suicide. Uh, someone who's expressed feeling hopeless, um, 
uh, substance use and alcohol abuse. Uh, and also this person may have a history of physical, emotional and sexual abuse. So what are the common warnings of suicide? Um, the, we can begin by saying that the person is so sad or moody and this sadness is not ending. It's, it, it just lingers on, even the mood swings. So this is a, a major risk factor um, and a warning sign for suicide. Sudden calmness. The person suddenly be, be, becomes uh, calm after a period of depression and moodiness. And this, I can link it to number seven, making preparations. You know, similar to Ahithopel, that they are putting their things in order. Someone who's just depressed suddenly stops becoming depressed and looks happy, and you're like, hey, okay, imeisha to hivo. So um, that can be a warning sign. Then um, someone who suddenly withdraws. I know there are times we may see our friends withdrawing or those close to us and you think they are going through something. It's, just, it's temporary, but we shouldn't ignore. We shouldn't ignore withdrawal. We shouldn't ignore people who suddenly things that would excite them, uh, activities, they are not enjoying them at, uh, anymore. And then there's a change in, in their appearance. They are, you know, someone who's always neat, cared about how they looked suddenly does not care um you know they sleep too much or they sleep less um than than that is over than that of a typical person um then they are engaged in reckless behavior or harmful behavior as well as uh, they've experienced a recent trauma or a sudden crisis and um, being in a state of despair which is something we'll really look at um just in the next slide and um and threatening or talking about wanting to die. So dealing with someone contemplating suicide, and I've seen that question in the chat box. Uh, chat box. Um, being with someone who verbalizes, someone you love, or someone close to you say that they are contemplating suicide, that's a very difficult place to be. And probably they don't say it once or twice. You know, it can bring so much anxiety. It can bring guilt. It, it can bring a lot of questions. And eventually you can just feel helpless or you can feel exhausted by the whole situation. But the key is in this point is to stay in relationship. That's the key. Keep your doors open. Talk to them. How are you feeling today? What, why, what, what was going on in your mind today? Where do you feel you're at today compared to yesterday? Assure them that there is light. There is light at the end of the tunnel. But this is not a journey that you can do alone. If, if it's something not for one day, two days, or even, even if it's said once, it's not, um, it's not a journey you should walk alone. You should, you should encourage this person to seek professional help because it's also not within you to have the skills. And you may end up also having anxiety yourself. You may end up, you worry so much about this person, you enter into depression yourself. So much as you're keeping the communications lines open, much as you're finding out how the struggle is, even for you who's dealing with someone who's contemplating, you need to walk the journey with someone else by helping this person walk that journey as well. So if God loves me as a Christian, if God loves me, why would he make me feel this way? And I know we've been there directly or indirectly as Christians. Um, people close to us or even ask, why would that person feel that way? Why would my loved one feel that way? But knowing that you're a Christian, knowing what the Bible talks about suicide, uh, and then you, you just can't shake off the feeling. You just can't get past the ideations. It brings shame, guilt, and then you just go down in a, in a dark spiral place. But um, 
And when you enter there, you need to understand that you have entered despair. Despair, you cannot reason well. You can't think rationally. The kind of decisions you'll make are not rational decisions or decisions for the person next to you who doesn't have um, this kind of stress will feel. You'll ask yourself, why does God love? Yet we know God loves me. But now at that point, you're questioning, does God love me? Because you're at a place of despair. So we need to remember that despair brings distorted thinking. And, and, that's, and that, that's a place where we don't make good decisions. So we have, we have this sudden crisis. We are not able to deal with it. We enter despair. But 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has given us a spirit of fear, has given us a spirit, not of fear, I think there's a typo, but of, and, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Sound mind. That's where we need to concentrate on. When, when you're in a place of despair, we need to work towards establishing building blocks for sound mind. And you cannot build those blocks without professional help or asking for help. Ask your loved one, I need help. I feel this way. I know this, I know this and this, but I can't help but feel this way. So we need to establish those building blocks for us for going to a sound mind, going to where God wants us to have a sound mind. And professional help is now open and is now everywhere and our church is also supporting professional help. So there's hope, um, especially the men who've called in, please remember, encourage your sons, encourage your, your nephews and nieces, encourage your brothers that they can speak out, that they should not keep things within themselves and they can, that there's always help. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Mary, um, for that very great presentation and uh, a great exercise um, in the discussion groups. I've learned something. I didn't know you could do that. Um, that's amazing. Thank you. Thank you so much. I can see the appreciation going up. Mm -hmm. We have all learned a lot. Um, I am trying to check on the chat room. Um, and I'm not able to read the questions. Mm -hmm. Somebody can just check for any questions. I don't know, Amboy, if you can pick out any questions from the chat room. Okay, let me check. What if, um, I can see one, what if they are in boarding school? How can one help them? I'm assuming this is a, a teenage child. And um, what I can say is it takes a team. You can't do it on your own. It takes the teacher. It takes the school nurse. It takes you. It takes um, the headmistress or headmaster. And it's even OK um, pulling them out for a week or two to understand exactly what is going on. It takes picking them up from school to go for their sessions and back. It, it takes sacrifice to build those blocks for a sound mind and to ensure that there's a sound mind. But if, um, if I've not addressed it uh, directly, because I may want to understand the, the question 360, um, please feel free to reach out to me. We can discuss further. If, if there are no more questions, um, Mary, we want to thank you very much um, for that wonderful, great presentation and opportunity to discuss, and indeed nothing is new under the sun. We have learned that this did happen, even in the Bible. And um, we have each taken something home, and mm -hmm. uh, I pray that uh, what we have learned today can be used 
even as we interact with our family members, as a, um, those of us who are teachers, the students who have got this kind of feelings and conversations, um, is not that they don't want to go to school. For us parents, when your child is having um, these thoughts and these feelings, um, see at Yanakata Shule, it is, it, is, it is worth taking note and listening to our children and to our young ones and also to our friends. So thank you so much. I want to invite Elder um, to um, the, um, take us uh, through the closure of the meeting. I can see some concerns and questions and uh, we shall pick this up um, in another forum. Elder, Karibu. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Judith, for the moderation. Thank you, Mary. That was a very insightful uh, presentation. We are going to end uh, with a word of uh, grace. And now, with the grace of our Lord, Jesus, the Lord Christ, Jesus Christ, and the, and the love, love of God. God.